my my position is it's a there's a there's less than one percent of the country serves. It's an all volunteer force. We've been at war for sixteen years, and there's thousands of people have been killed and tens of thousands have been wounded. U.S. And if somebody wants to come and serve in a war, we should not care how they go to the bathroom or how they have sex. But we do. It becomes a social and a political issue, sometimes a religious issue. It's not that we shouldn't pay attention to that, but from my standpoint, who are we to say, because of the way you have sex or go to the bathroom, you can't serve in a, in a volunteer service. That's that part of it. So the two points that the president had tweeted out were too much spending and a distraction. You think this is more social and political then? Yeah, I mean, there's the, the amount of... I'm not in favor of somebody saying, I want to go in the service to get an operation. Mm-hmm. Okay, that if we, if we know that, my answer would be no. If somebody comes in the service, what, while they're in the service, decide they need something, then the service pays for it. And it's, yes, it's expensive to you and me to have to pay for an operation, but not in the government considering how much money we, we waste to begin with. There is a problem with acceptance. It's a relatively conservative service, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, uh, and small, small units. And it's, it, would be, it is difficult to have, to have, not fair, but difficult in a 40-man platoon or on a ship or on a, on a plane that's flying for 16 hours. Uh, those are a lot of issues that go on socially. And if you, when you throw in an issue like transgender or homosexuality or boyfriend-girlfriend, it adds to the mix and it's difficult. It doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but it, we have to accept that it's going to be tough. So it, it sounds like it, it could very well be a distraction, but it's something that needs to be dealt with and moved on from? There's no question it's a distraction. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a distraction at Channel 6 News. So it would be a distraction. People, it's, it's a bit of an oddity. It's, it's diff, something different. We're attracted to something different. You put that in a, an organization in which everyone has the same uniform, they, they get served the same meal in the army all over the world, the same meal, type of oneness, and you put some one or something different in the middle of that mix. Yeah, it is, but it's. For, but I think we're at a dangerous spot if we want to taking people who want to serve in the middle of a war, and we say no because of the way you have sex to go to the bathroom. I think that is unfortunate. I would not, by the way, and I guess this is the fourth one, do not change the standard to meet something new that comes in. We know how it, what it takes to have, be in combat. We've done it now very, very well and very long. We've lost a lot of great people doing this. We should never change the standard to meet something new socially. That would be a mistake. And unfortunately, in my experience, about 30 years, we normally change the standard to meet the new social thing we're trying in the military, and that's wrong. I think it's pretty fair to say that physically men and women can be very, very different okay. in terms of what they can tolerate, what they can handle. Does that present challenges if someone is transgender in the military? No. If, if, depending on the unit. If you're, if you're in an infantry unit that has to carry anywhere from 80 to 140 pounds, then your size is a man and woman, and there are differences in strength and size and bone structure. Yes. But if you can carry 140 pounds up the side of a cliff in Afghanistan, I don't care if you're a man or a woman. But don't, because you're a woman, say, oh, you only have to carry 40, and this other, this other guy has to carry the 100, 140. That's the mistake, and that adds the problem of this. It's not simply if there are a lot of jobs that don't require 20 chin-ups. There are a lot of jobs that don't, re- don't require a massive physical presence, but there are those that do. So, we again... We should not be changing that. The standard we know works in combat to meet a social issue. That doesn't mean the social issue, in this case transgendered, should not be accepted. It's just don't look at it as if it's simple, because it, it's not, it, because of the things I just described. Okay, you perfectly answered my questions. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you think is important to talk about about this? Yeah, that's one other thing. I, I think this would take 10 years. That normally it takes a generation, in my experience, to have whatever you interject um, into a, the uniform services to work. It's, it's normally a generation that has to change. 
whether it was women, whether it was homosexuality in the services, now it's a transgender issue. But we have to expect and accept that this will not be an easy trans transition of acceptance in any of the services. But overall, if you want to serve your country, you should be allowed to. That's your stance. Sounds as long as absolutely, as long as you don't change the standard to let you do that. That's my objection. If you want to come in and you can do whatever the standard is now, we're not should not change the standard so you can't come in. But here's the standard after 16 years of doing this job in combat. If you can meet that standard, you should be welcome to come in.